it's really refreshing when I'm hearing presenters on TV or celebrities when they're actually talking about free speech. But to me, I don't believe they understand what free speech actually is. You see, free speech is basically being able to say what you like to who you like. And the only curb on that is incitement, uh, calling to action. So, for instance, uh, me uh, saying, right, we should go out and do this to this person, that kind of thing. That's incitement. Um, and the most obvious one is uh, shouting fire in a cinema. You can't do that because people are going to get hurt. It's a call to action. That's the only um, straight line, really, in reference to speech. Everything else is admissible. Uh, at no point, this, this, is, this is me, this is what free speech actually means. At no point should the government or the police be knocking on my door because I said something to someone. It literally is uh, none of their business. That's the way I see free speech. Well, that is what free speech is. But the likes of the celebrities, presenters and, and, and uh, politicians still don't understand that. The, 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 the pivotal part. Now, why is it important to have free speech? Well, let's go on with the side of people that say they're against the free speech because it breeds hatred and all that kind of stuff. Let me ask you a question. Would you prefer it that uh, someone that was part of the National Front or the KKK were just underground and, and they only talked to their people, never really talked to anyone outside? So you didn't know whether or not they had feelings that maybe black people were inferior and all that kind of stuff. Or would you prefer it that they were able to come out with these things and you was able to debate them? Say, for instance, in a university or a college or um, even out in the street when you're in a shop, that you was able to debate these people, make them understand the way they're thinking is totally wrong. See, that, that's, that's the pivotal part, being able to change someone's mind, which has been done on many occasions. I, I remember watching a documentary about a, um, a jazz uh, artist in America, and he decided to set up a meeting with the KKK. The jazz artist was a black guy, is a black guy, he's still around actually. I forgot his name, uh, I'll put it down below. But he went, he went out of his way to make a meeting with uh, one of the high ups in the KKK. Had a meeting, then he started to meet the, the, the clan as it were. Um, then he brought in a sort of relationship between the head of the clan and himself and ended up changing the minds of several of the clan members, so much so that they gave this black jazz artist their costumes and said, look, I've had enough, you are absolutely right, that's it. You see, that's the point. Debate changes minds. If you close down debate, then these people just go underground. And all they're thinking of is that you don't want to listen to me, you don't want to argue my points, so I'm going to be even more of a, a racist, a bigot, a, a sexist, etc., etc. The whole point of free speech is that you're able to talk to each other. And when certain things have come out that you know are incorrect, and you're able to correct someone on that, that's the pivotal part of what free speech is. But to, to have free speech in colleges and universities and everything else is a must. You go to colleges and universities to learn different points of view, to learn what happened in the past. And all the woke community want to do is close that down. So people in university or colleges are unable to hear the bad parts of our society, as well as the good parts. And that's when you know you're falling down.